Welcome back. So under the camera, you see me working on a drawing using ebony pencil on 80 pound paper based on this photograph. However, you won't have a photograph. You'll simply be sitting in front of a live, still life with your viewfinder using it as needed to zero in on the area of the still life that you wish to draw. That'll help you to frame it. Once you initially frame the still life with your viewfinder, you probably don't need a viewfinder any longer, but it does sure help you to uh, isolate areas of the piece that you want to draw. You can see that the teapot here, this little teapot, which is really shiny and black, you've got to push it as dark as you can, being aware that within these reflections aren't all blacks. There's a white, there's lots of grays, there are some deeper, darker blacks down here and gradually that's getting pushed darker. I tend to work in line and not, uh, not blend my colors any other way. And you can see how I sometimes draw with my eraser and then I get it in there and I'll remove or move the graphite around to get the effects that I like. If I don't like the line, all that line work, I can gently rub the eraser across the surface and kind of blend things together. So it's not gonna be a perfect representation of what you see. What you draw is not photographic, but that's kind of okay. You wanna make sure that you're spending time looking very carefully. Look for areas of lightness versus darkness or lightness versus area that aren't so light. And jump around a little bit to see where are your lightest lights. And by comparison, light areas that aren't truly as bright, like this is not as bright as that, this is not as bright as that, this is not as bright as that, okay? And then as you organize both in line and also in value, lights and darks, you get a sense of how you want the whole to come together. I don't think you wanna just stay in one area working it for a long time. You wanna make sure you jump around the composition, getting the balance of values, lights, mediums, and darks into a correct relationship. Down here in the photograph is this textile, this woven fabric piece with tassels. And the tassels are kind of interesting. They almost demand that you use longer marks. And so even though I'm not observing so many individual tassels, I'm kind of getting a sense of where the tassels are coming from, how they're moving, their length, and gradually that will allow me to create the effect of what I see without having to draw each and every one with real accuracy. Is that cheating? Not really. And I'll gra gradually as I build those up, then you would see that they might look more like the actual tassels that I see over here. It would take a while and I might have to get my eraser in there and get involved. This area right here of woven fabric has a pattern in it. You can see over here and that pattern may or may not appear in my final. So if certain details are difficult for you and difficult for you to draw, just ignore them. Go for the bigger shapes, the bigger design areas, the bigger areas of dark and light. See if you can nail those areas down. Be sure to try to use the whole of your page as much as you can. Don't just concentrate all your energies on one small area, okay? Now, you try.